Hi and welcome back to our series Blender for Production 2D, 3D and camera tracking inside of Blender 3.0. My name is Helge Maus from Pixel Train. In the first lesson, you have learned now how to prepare your footage for tracking. You learned a little bit about the video sequence editor inside of Blender. We talked about making image sequences and how you can adjust colors, for example, so that you get a better result later in the tracking process. In this lesson now, we want to take a closer look to the movie clip editor inside of Blender, because this is the editor where we track. If you are planning to have a 3D camera track or an object track, you have to understand that the basic of that or the fundamentals which you need is 2D tracking. You need a solid knowledge of 2D tracking before you go into camera tracking. And so the topic of this lesson here now is to learn about the 2D tracking functionalities inside of Blender. So let's get started. We need now a movie clip editor and we can start again here on the splash screen of Blender or Control N if you generate a new file. And we have again a new layout for that and this is the VFX layout. So click that and we are now in a new layout. And you see beside this motion tracking layout, we have three other layouts here, a masking layout, a compositing layout, because after we have tracked something, we maybe want to make composites with real footage and 3D elements and so on. And we have a render viewer here, but we stay here under motion tracking for this moment in time. In this layout now, we have several panels. So let's go through the panels and try to understand what we see here. This is a classic 3D viewport, nothing fancy here. Outliner, properties, this is common in Blender. But then we have these three windows. And if you now look into the editor type of these three windows, you see that all three windows here are a movie clip editor. You see it's the same symbol everywhere. And this movie clip editor has different working modes. And you see that every working mode here is named tracking. There's another one which is mask. So if you want to generate masks, you can do that also in the movie clip editor. And the only difference now is that we have here a different view on our movie clip. This here is a dope sheet. And this here is the clip itself. And in this editor, we have a graph view. If you want later to check your track, you can do it in a dope sheet manner or in a graph manner. But the working area, the main working area is here, the clip itself. Let's make a little bit more space and try to understand how this window now works. I have to confess that the Blender 3.0 version of this movie clip editor or the tracking environment is still old school. So before Blender 2.8, we had panels on the left and the right of Blender and we hadn't got this really tool driven approach. Yeah? We had many shortcuts and we knew in which panel functionality is. Since Blender 2.8, Blender is really coming to a tool approach where you have a toolbar on the left. You can press the T key for that. And then we have the end menu on the other side where we have options, for example. This editor is not completely at this point. So we still have this old idea that we have panels on the left and right, and you have to make sure that you press the T key to have on the left the panels and the N key to have them on the right. But you see they are empty, and the reason for this is we haven't loaded any footage. So let's do that. I go now here to open and click here this open button, and you are now in a file viewer, and I go here. You remember in the last tutorial, we made a bookmark for that into our trainings data, into our footage, stabilize, and here we generated our image sequence. If you don't have now this footage here, you can get this footage on my Gumroad or my Patreon. So you can work exactly with the same footage. And I thank you a lot if you want to support me with Gumroad or Patreon for that. But you also can support me if you subscribe, give me a thumbs up and use your own footage. Okay, let's load now this sequence. So I can select now our first image here. This editor here is quite clever. So if you have an image sequence, which is numbered like this here, you can select the first image here and click on open clip. And then it loads the complete clip here into Blender. 
And now you see that the tool area here and also the end menu is filled now with information. Let's make a small round trip about this window here so that you understand what you are seeing. In this viewer here, you see your footage. You can move it around by middle mouse button. Click here. You also can scroll in and out with the mouse wheel or you can press the F key like frame to frame your footage. Quite convenient. Then you have here on the left side, these tabs here, we have a tracking area where we can load our clip here, set markers, and we have the tracking settings for new markers, which we want to generate. And here is the tracking panel. And this tracking panel is really the same like this tracking panel here. It depends which tracking panel you want to use. So we don't need that for now. Then we have a solve panel. So if we have, for example, 2D tracks made and they are solid, we can solve them into 3D space. This is then done by the solve here. But we also have here options for cleaning up the whole thing or for reconstructing the scene for 3D. So orientation stuff or setting up a scene and so on. And then we have here the annotations. If you take a close look here, you see that we also have a menu for many of these options. So here is the reconstruction, which is really the same like here, these stuff. Sometimes the menus are faster to reach. And the nice thing is that you see also here keyboard shortcuts, which are quite good if you learn them a little bit, if you use the camera tracker here a lot. On the right side in our N menu, so if you don't see it, press the N here. You see first your footage options. They are the same like in the video sequence editor. So you see again where this footage comes from. And we talked about that you really often for tracking don't use the original footage, but maybe enhanced footage where you made a little bit of color correction or tweak the contrast and so on. So if you want to exchange the footage here, you can do that directly at this point. Then we see the color space, which this footage is using. And we have to talk about the color management in a moment. You see something seems to be wrong. And we also see here now the image sequence that we have 220 frames here. That's exactly what we had. Then we have here the tracking area, and this is the single track. So really confusing for many people here is we have here tracking settings. Yeah, tracking settings here and also tracking settings here later. And the thing is, these tracking settings here are the default for tracks which you newly generate. So for the next tracker you generate. These tracking settings are for the tracker which you select. So it's the current track. But it is more clear in a moment. We also have the camera settings for the solver and some marker settings for the tracker itself. Then we have a stabilization panel, which we use in the next lesson. So when we have tracked a little bit, we want to do a 2D stabilization. We use that there. And then again, we have the view. I think that's enough here for the interface. And the first thing we have now to tackle here is the color management because this footage looks wrong. You maybe remember from our first lesson of the video sequence editor that I talked a little bit about color management there. And if we are coming from the 3D background, you know that we really often use ACES or Filmic. If we are now using video edits or even here the movie clip editor, we normally want to work in sRGB. So let's go over here into the render settings, into the color management. And yes, the problem with this footage is that our view transform is in Filmic. So let's go here and switch it over to standard and make sure that the look here is on none. And now you see the footage looks correct. Nice. Okay, our footage is now there. We see everything. But the next problem which we now have is that we want to see the footage. So we want to play it. And if you now take a look here at the bottom part here of the movie clip editor, you see this bluish line here. And here is the time indicator. You can click here and drag around. You see, there's the time indicator here and also you change the time here. 
But what you also have seen is that here these elements are filled and these frames are now cached. It's really important for the movie clip editor to work fluently that you cache your footage. And the caching thing makes sense at the time when you decided how long your clip is. So we first have to set the length of our project fitting to the clip and then we cache the whole thing. So how long is our clip? We know 220 frames. So you can go here now into your project and say the end is 220. But you also can use a really convenient function here in the left menu. So T key, go to track, and you can click here, set scene frames. And if you do that, you will see that now Blender looks into the image sequence into this clip here and sets now the frames for you. Nice. Now we can cache the whole thing. You can cache by playing the clip or you can prefetch the whole thing. And for this, we have a button here or you can also use the keyboard shortcut P like prefetch. And now if I click that, you see a bar comes here and now the footage is cached. And if you now press play here, it plays nice. Now there's a little pitfall. If you are in this window here and press space, then the footage seems to play nice. But really often it happens if you are here, for example, in this timeline here and you scrub here, shift right mouse button, this seems to work. But now if you press space here, you see the time indicator runs, but you don't see anything here. This is annoying. Normally I want to see both windows synchronized. And to do that, we have to go to this panel here. This is the normal timeline. And this is the playback, which normally gets our spacebar key. And in the playback, if you open this drop down here, you can synchronize now the play in here. And what I want is I want to play always the movie clip editor. So if you tick that now, and now it doesn't make the problem anymore. So if you are now here in the lower section of your footage, you can press play. And the timeline sends the play command also to the movie clip editor. Nice. Let's jump back to the first frame. You remember the keyboard shortcut from the last lesson, shift, left arrow to the beginning. And now we can start with our tracking. 